Hi guys, so it's time to look at the new game room. So we've been here for a few weeks now and the game room here is really, really small, but it's the best setup I've ever had. I'm really chuffed with the setup. Um, it was great kind of because I planned it out moving in that everything's laid out perfectly and I've made I think really good use of the space so I've got a little seating area here and everything's set up but yeah I'll do a quick pan round the room and then we're going to have a proper in-depth look and I'm going to show you some of my favorite games and geek out over some stuff so yeah join me as I look around the brand new game room so yeah, we've got like a cabinet over here. We've got like the console set up here. Um, let me just move this stool. Um, console set up and some TVs. Um, artwork obviously. Little chair where I can sit and then there's another like main cabinet over there. And uh, yeah, some stuff set up over here. But yeah, I think I'll start this side. So I'll just set the camera up and then I can show you guys some of this stuff a bit in depth so i'm trying to get a, a wider shot but it's because of the 24 mm uh, lens and the room's very small so it's hard to get everything in but this is kind of one of those annoying um things that you get you do get these in english houses where it's this is above the stairs so they put this like huge uh white box um thing in the room above the stairs so it kind of heightens the stairs so annoying to have it in here so i've tried to make the most of this by just putting stuff on it so we've got this massive white box here which i just made use of because we had it around the house and we don't really need it it's like one of those kind of toy boxes or one that goes at the end of the bed and that is just full of um console boxes controllers and leads all the hookups i need for setting up all the consoles and everything um the ones that aren't set up permanently so that's just full of all sorts and odds and ends so it's good to have there we've got the trusty vectrex here obviously which has the um the new uv overlay on i don't know how well you can see that there but i'll be doing a video on that soon enough anyway um we've got my streets of rage vinyls which was signed by yuzo kashiro when i met him they are awesome really nice memory of uh, when I met Yuzo Koshiro and saw him play live at Fabric in uh, London. Behind here we've got some artwork. We've got uh, the Sonic 2 artwork from Soul Funk Retro there, which is awesome. Probably getting a bit of glare from the TVs the other side of the room. Um, we've got the uh, Tempest cab, the mini 12 inch cab that I got from Replicade uh, New Wave Toys. Um, and then yeah, up here we've got a little Fallout Shrine, um, so we've got the, the Pip-Boy Fallout 4, we've got Fallout 3 Lunchbox Edition, we've got the uh, Fallout New Vegas um, Special Edition, which is actually numbered 1 of 6,650, so I'll show you a close-up of that if I remember as well. And then some little like odds and ends of Fallout stuff. Uh, and then we've got my Mega Drive, obviously Big Box Mega Drive. Um, great memories there. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little Game Boy sign. I think you can see it. I should have worn my glasses. There's like a Game Boy sh old shop sign there. Um, the Sega sign, which is from Nathan Russell. And then we've got a GameCube. And on top of there is a little Boba Fett. So there's actually only two things in this whole room that were my original ones from childhood. And this little Boba Fett on the speeder bike is one of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had hundreds and hundreds of Star Wars toys in the 80s because I had like quite a big collection of them anyway. And then uh, one of my friends, Adam, who was a couple of years older than me, probably two, three years older than me, and he had two older brothers. And all three of them had an absolutely huge collection each of uh, Star Wars figures. And when they got to a certain age, his mum just gave me all three of their collections. So I essentially had four big collections together of these Star Wars toys and I, I had so many. But yeah, as you do, I sold them all, but these are the only things I kept. So I kept the little speeder bike and the Boba Fett there. So that's cool. Um, and then over there behind the Tempest cab, I don't know if you can see that, but we've got all my other um, gaming soundtrack records. So we've got the data disc records, um, we've got 
Shadow of the Colossus, Shovel Knight, Hotline Miami, some of my favourite soundtracks, but I'm sure I'll show you a close up of those as well if I remember. So let's move around this way to where the kind of seating area is and then the main cabinet in the room. So a bit of an awkward angle from here, but we'll make do. So we've got all the console boxes up here, or some of them at least. Um, this actually, to men I didn't mention, this game room is probably, it's probably like two thirds of the collection. So loads of stuff is in storage or under the bed or elsewhere. Most of my modern stuff like um, 3DS, Switch, Vita, PS4, uh, all downstairs or under the bed, all my DS stuff, loads of stuff is still uh, away in storage. So um, this is the main kind of stuff that I like having on show and the stuff that I like to play in general. So yeah, we've got um, we've got Sand Dreamcast PC Engine boxes. We've got the NES, which is actually in the box, um, which I don't have set up permanently. Uh, we've got the Super Famicom, which is set up, and then an N64 which again is in the box because I have a special edition N64 that's set up kind of day to day. Uh, then we got the two shelves of my favourite console of all time, the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis for my North American viewers. Now um, this, this lot is too deep and this shelf is just one deep so there's plenty of room for more stuff in the shelf. So I've got some of my favourite games kind of lined up on show. We've got this little Sonic uh, Pixel Pals thing which lights up, which is cool. Um, we've also got these, these are cool. I used to have these when I was a kid. You guys used to have these, so if, if that's going to focus. Um, they are the Panini uh, Sega Super Play cards. So that's a full set in a little protective case, but they are awesome. Um, I used to collect those when I was a kid, so it's cool to have a little full set of those. Um, so yeah, some of my favourite games, we've got Bare Knuckle, Streets of Rage, so I, uh, I do have um, Bare Knuckle and Bare Knuckle 3, but I don't have a boxed copy of Bare Knuckle 2, I've only got the cart only. I would like to get a Bare Knuckle 2, um, but I do have Streets of Rage and Streets of Rage 2, hugely nostalgic to me. And I sold my copy of Streets of Rage 3, and I bought uh, Bare Knuckle 3 because it is without a doubt the better game. A lot of changes made for the Western version. And then you just got two layers there of uh, Mega Drive games. Loads of great stuff in there, love my Mega Drive. Um, we've got some of the new releases like you've got um, Tanglewood here, Coffee Crisis, some of the newer released uh, Mega Drive games. Uh, Pia Solar there and uh, Puppy Commando, another two new newish games. Um, let me move the camera as we go down so you can see. So actually, seeing as it's my favourite console, the Mega Drive, let's have a look at some of the other games back here. Um, just some from childhood or whatever um, ones I used to enjoy. NBA Live '95 used to love this game as a kid, um, one, of, one of the best NBA games of the 90s, really really awesome series, but this is my favourite by far, and uh, I have another memory of when I first moved out of my parents' home, which was I think the year 2000, so I was 19, and I got this new sound system like Yamaha amp and massive speakers and everything from Richer Sounds, and we had like a Playstation 2 and we had a Dreamcast at that flat. But I also have my Mega Drive because even even back then I was uh, you know still into Mega Drive and playing the Mega Drive and I remember setting up the stereo and we played Streets of Rage and we played um, NBA Live '95 with with the stereo set up. Really great game. Got the Sonics obviously Sonic 2 being my favourite. Um, Sonic 3 is great and we got Sonic and Knuckles there, but Sonic 2 is probably the one that. I'm most fond of, sort of nostalgia wise. I loved that game back in the day. Uh, especially the two player mode, despite the slowdown. Strider used to have that as a kid. Um, Tasmania, that's a great one. Um, <clears throat> Toe Jam and Earl, one of my favourite games. Used to play this to death with my mate back in the day. And uh, yeah, just played through the co op mode and. Um, play it through to completion it's got a really good end screen as well where you get back to your home planet and you you actually play the 
the end of the game, if that makes sense. Um, you get back to your family and what have you, but love this game, love the whole idea of it and the whole funk aspect of it and the music and everything. Let's see what we've got up here. Micro Machines, so Micro Machines 2, probably my favorite. Turbo Tournament's great, it's kind of a revamped 2, isn't it? But um, yeah, this is the one that, that has the most memories for me, but still to this day, when I have a few mates around, we whack the four player multi-tap into this, or uh, you can use the, um, the J cart. So it's got two extra controller ports actually on the cartridge, but um, it is a bit ropey, like if you, if someone pulls one of the cables, then it does kind of mess with the cartridge and can turn the game off. So generally I just use the multi-tap, but yeah, I mean, is there a more competitive multiplayer racing game from the 90s? I don't think so. Um, let's move these down. So Megalomania, it's another one I used to play on the Amiga as well and uh, loved it on the Mega Drive and it's Sensible Software who obviously made Sensible Soccer and it's a strategy game where you play as one of four gods and you have um, the game's like split into what they call epochs and each epoch has three islands and you have a set number of men that you can deploy so you choose however many men you want to deploy on each island and then when you've taken over each island the number of men you've got left carries over to the next epoch so it was kind of a case of practicing those early levels and completing them with as few men as possible so you had more for the much harder later levels but it was really advanced actually it was um it was like you'd research technology um and you had to mine for resources research technology and then defend and attack as well so you would assign men to different tasks and uh, yeah it was hard because you had to um, as you kind of advanced technologically you'd go through eras so it's like medieval era and then you'd advance and eventually like futuristic weaponry and defenses and all this jazz but um, yeah you could form alliances with the rival oh. Uh, and form alliances with the rival gods and everything and it had a lot of uh, really cool gameplay aspects but yeah really great games some really cool voice samples in there as well which if you've played it you know what I'm talking about uh, Landstalker great game from childhood my mate Ali had this and we used to play this to death so I never really played RPGs as a kid but did play um, a couple and we loved this it's like isometric so it's a bit of a weird one but um, really cool graphics and music and story but it's uh because it's isometric there are a few sort of platformy bits in there and it was really really difficult because of the isometric viewpoint it made it really hard to perform some of these jumps and stuff uh of course golden axe golden axe 2 golden axe being um, my favorite one in the series um this is a great series desert strike so um still play this every now and again and with the uh the quick shot python joystick you know the one that's actually like a joystick uh, so it's really nice for piloting the helicopter um, comic zone great little game i never actually played this until um you know well after the the 2000s um so probably like 10 years ago maybe uh, but yeah it's cool it's kind of like a little beat em up it's set within a comic strip and it's a shame they didn't expand on this series or it hasn't had a sequel but it's a really really great game um, what else we got in here Altered Beast and Aladdin and all the classics like that Let's see what else we got back here oh Forgotten Worlds that's a great little shooter from uh, Capcom I think is it Capcom doesn't actually say strangely it's just says Sega but I thought um, I had a feeling Capcom uh, actually made this game but I'm not sure someone could tell me in the comments but yeah great shooter it's uh, like a weird setup the shooter you're two little floating men but it's um, it's a good two-player game and it's got like a shop mid-level where you can buy upgrades and all that jazz. Um, I didn't really play shooters either much when I was a kid, like relative to other stuff, so um, the shooters I did play I really enjoyed. 
Uh, oh, it's another one Ali had, my mate down the road, Kid Chameleon. So uh, it's a really cool little platform game. It's so long, there's so many levels to this that we couldn't have ever possibly hoped to have completed this without the aid of modern stuff. So like if I play it on the overdrive and I've got a save state or something and I can save it and come back to it, but it takes forever. But you're uh, this little kid and um, you can see him on the front there and he's got all these uh, helmets back there that he can pick up. So there's like a, um, a Halloween hockey mask and a samurai uh, mask, um, there's like a tank one, there's one where you can headbutt walls, so each helmet like gives you a special ability which helps you defeat enemies and progress through the level and what have you, really cool idea. Um, let's have a look at one more, I don't know if you can see that but yeah there's a few um, few Mars System games there, not really being into Mars System, but a few of my favourites in there like Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap and a couple that the missus had when she was a kid. And last one I'll show you the Mega Drive stuff, uh, Story of Thought. So this is another one I didn't play back in the day but played relatively recently, but really great RPG, it's got great graphics, I don't know how well you can see it there, but um, really like cartoony sort of Aladdin-y type graphics and it's got that Arabian theme like Aladdin but really cool game um, I think it was called um, Beyond Oasis in, in the States so you might recognize it by by that name but yeah if you ever see this um, I, I don't know how much it's going for but definitely worth a go especially if you like RPGs so you might notice throughout the course of this video that my haircut might change because this is now a week later and I'm reshooting a few bits because the camera didn't record certain bits like these two shelves. So these two shelves are obviously the Dreamcast stuff predominantly with a few other bits and pieces in. Um, so we've got this, uh, another acrylic sign made by uh, Nathan Russell, similar to that Sega one you saw earlier, but this is a Dreamcast one. Um, so this is like my PAL and my, some of my import stuff. So PAL stuff we've really, really slimmed down from when I had the full set. Um, got rid of a hell of a lot of stuff, just kept stuff that I want to play or something that has, say, a nice memory to me or whatever. So um, some of my favorite games here, so like the Power Stone games. Absolutely love these games, played these to death back in the day because when I first moved out of home, my uh, flatmate had a Dreamcast. And uh, we used to, yeah, we used to play Power Stone absolutely all the time. Um, Soul Calibur, uh, what else? Crazy Taxi, um, Aero Wings 2 there. That was the first gift I ever got on YouTube. That was from Sean, aka Horatio Van Basten. Um, when I was doing the full set, he sent me that. So that's a nice little memory there. Um, another one, Dragon Riders, Chronicles of Pern. Now that was a gift from Matt Soulfunk Retro and Matthew Hartley, they bought me that at Blackpool again when I was doing the full set and that was actually the first game that Matt Soulfunk Retro ever worked on. Um, we've got the Marvel vs Capcom games there, awesome games. Uh, Rival Schools 2, Project Justice, um, really awesome game, it's like a 3D fighter. Um, where you play in like teams of three and it's kind of like Street Fighter EX plus Alpha in the graphical style, that kind of 3D polygonal graphics. Um, and then we've got like a small selection of uh, dual case um, Japanese and US games, NTSC. So US ones, we've got some oddities there like Typing of the Dead which you can play with the keyboard. So that's like House of the Dead, but you're typing words on the keyboard as they appear on the screen rather than shooting the gun. Um, Guru Mark of the Wolves, great little SNK game there on the Dreamcast. Uh, Elemental Gimmick Gear, that was a gift from Raz, uh, Rasmus or Raz Tendo as he goes by now. Um, wicked little RPG that. And then we got some Japanese stuff, so what we got here? My all time favorite Dreamcast game, Zero Gunner 2. Absolutely fantastic shooter this. I'm really chuffed I got this about, probably when I start, first started going to play Manchester, so maybe around six, seven years ago, because that was the, uh, the first one. I, I started going from the very first one. That was way before I was on YouTube, and I played this, 
and as soon as I got home I jumped on eBay and I think I paid like 45 quid for it which is great because now that's I think that's easily doing a hundred quid um, we got just a few exclusives like Ikaruga um, that only came out in Japan uh, Capcom SNK uh, Millennium Fight 2000 so just a few fighters and shoes and a couple of other randoms we've got a few uh, like custom um, kind of reproductions but of games that weren't released so we've got Half-Life which was never released uh, Echo 2 there and Propeller Arena. Propeller Arena is probably my favourite unreleased game on the Dreamcast. It's an AM2 game and it was cancelled because of 9-11 essentially because you're flying around, you can see on the cover there, you're flying around cities in planes and the release date was really really close to 9-11 so when that happened the game was cancelled sadly. Um, but yeah loads of great games in there. Um, now down here we've got some more imports and some indie stuff so um, some of the later indie releases like uh, from Neo uh, NG Dev Team stuff like Gunlord there um, a few other random ones we got some official releases now a lot of the late Dreamcast releases in Japan were released in these DVD boxes rather than in the um, dual cases and the CD cases Under Defeat's definitely one of my favourites it's kind of like Zero Gunner 2 but I do prefer Zero Gunner 2 but very similar flying helicopters shooting the place up really really good it also got a re-release on PS3 and 360 re reasonably recently um, yeah a few shooters and stuff there uh, here we've got uh, indie games so let's pull these out so we've got PS Solar there obviously So yeah, these are just some of the like more recent releases. So I think that came out last year, Alice Dreams Tournament. That's kind of like a Bomb Man clone. Um, what else we got that's interesting in here? Stormwind, which is one of the better indie games, a horizontal shooter, but it looks absolutely fantastic graphically, especially if you run it through VGA. Uh, we've got stuff like Rush Rally Racing in there and what have you. I got rid of a few of my indie ones because I just wasn't playing them, but these are the ones that I kind of really like or have a connection to in some way. Um, we've got a load of peripherals there, so we've got the House of the Dead gun. I don't know how well you can see back there. We've got like a mouse, several controllers, like VMUs, all sorts. Um, got the box from one of my ASCII pad, Fight Pad FTs. So I've got two of those, the blue one and this one, but this is the only one I've got boxed. Um, we've got a full set of the demos, the Dream On demos back there. That's a, a, a recent indie one, Volga the Viking. Um, and here we got the uh, Dreamcast Sega Hard, Girl, Hard Girls figure. There we go, just kind of Dreamcast themed, sat with the Dreamcast stuff there. Um, we've got Shemu 1 and 2, really nice condition. And they, these are in these um, acrylic cases made by Adrian Fields. So just to protect them. So my Shenmue and Shenmue 2 I ended up getting, uh, or definitely Shenmue 2 I got in a bundle for free, but these are like really minty condition, really nice condition. We've got one of my uh, Dreamcast arcade sticks there, so that's just the standard stock one, so that's boxed. So I do have another couple down there, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and then we've got my Mega um, Vectrex collection, so some of the newer releases here like uh, Big Blue, Frontier, Vector Pilot, um, Wire out there, and then I don't really collect the just standard releases, so this is the only car I have, uh, which is Starship, um, which is a good game, and then I've just got a bunch of overlays there. So I've got a multi car which is currently in the Vectrex. Um, so I just kind of swap out the overlays and that's it. Um, so yeah, I mean that's probably it for the dream car shelf. Uh, let's move on to the next one down. I hope this is light enough guys because it, believe it or not, it's like 3 p.m. on a Saturday in July and it's completely overcast and the, the you know it's not as light as I, I'd hoped for the tour. But hey, I, I hope I can adjust it in in post probably. So uh, next down, we've got like a shit ton of controllers and stuff. Like most of my box controllers are away 
in boxes and in the box there. Um, but we've got a few, we've got like Saturn and Mega Drive pads, uh, we've got the uh, we've got the PC Engine multi-tap and the Avenue Pad 6, the six button controller. Um, we've got a Wavebird back there, we've got a ton of boxed um, N64 controllers there uh, and what have you. And we've got my meager collection of PAL Saturn games because I don't really collect PAL Saturn, I got rid of most of them but We've got uh, Guardian Heroes there, great game. Uh, and a couple like from childhood and stuff. This is cool. Um, my custom Police Noughts PAL version from Ben Boyd, he made this case. And uh, yeah, absolutely stunning work there. So this is basically the English translation of Police Noughts, which never came out, but it was ripped to CD and Ben designed this case and everything. So that is absolutely fantastic. Um, another Sega Hard Girls figure, so that's the third and final one, that's the Sega Saturn one. So we've got one for each Sega console kind of down the um, down the cabinet. I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but they just, they're nice, they accentuate the, the games and there's one for each Sega system, so it just had to be done. Um, we've got a few of this, of the Saturn RAM packs like uh, X-Men vs Street Fighter, we've got Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter there, love these. Um, the pride of the collection of the Saturn stuff has to be the Dungeons and Dragons box set, which is absolutely minty. Um, I very luckily got this off Steve Bailey years ago for 70 quid, but it goes for considerably more now. But it is in lovely nick. Fantastic game. If you've not played this, this is a compilation of the two Dungeons and Dragons arcade games that Capcom released. So you've got. Um, what's it called tower of Dr doom and then shadow of what's it shadow of uh oh yeah shadow over mistara there you go uh couldn't quite remember the name of that but they are fantastic saturn games there um i'll leave that off so you can see what was behind it so we've got my meager collection of pc engine games because a pc engine is another one where i thought i got one and started collecting and it got a bit silly so i thought let's just, let's just get a turbo everdrive and i'll play games off the everdrive and not worry too much about collecting them um but we got some cool ones in there uh let me just grab that so like street fighter 2 champion edition uh really really good conversion on the pc engine surprisingly it plays really really well but you do need a six button pad um, and then we've got a very small, again, collection of Mega CD stuff because I just burn most of those. Um, but we've got the ones I really love. We've got Final Fight CD has to be had. We've got Sonic CD there. Um, some good games. And then we've got my collection of uh, Saturn um, Japanese games. So Japanese where it's out on Saturn. If you've got a Saturn and you're playing PAL only, you're really, really missing out because the Japanese library is just vastly better it's crazy um so we've got some really cool games in here uh we've got the street fighter uh, zeros which is street fighter alpha here we've got sokyo garantai which is one of my favorite shooters wicked vertical shooter that if you like uh 2d beat em ups or 2d shooters get yourself a japanese saturn and the Sega Saturn is a console that I never had as a kid, never even saw one. No one I knew had one. It was never talked about. It was all N64 and PlayStation at my school. And uh, yeah, just got a Saturn probably about seven, eight years ago and just fell in love with it. And it's one of my favorite consoles now. I play it a hell of a lot these days. Um, what else we got in here? Oh yeah, so we got uh, Kingdom Grand Prix, which is kind of an interesting vertical shooter that kind of, it, it mixes um, like Grand Prix, like a race element with vertical shooter elements, which is really cool uh, little game. Um, Don Patchy and Dodon Patchy, fantastic vertical shooters from Cave. Uh, really fantastic. In fact, Dodon Patchy's running on the Tarte setup behind there, behind the camera, so you'll see that in a sec, but these are must-haves on the Saturn for me. I absolutely love them, and they're great for just a quick pick up and play. If you've got 10, 20 minutes spare, you come in and you just have a blast on those and, and you're away. 
Um, but yeah, I won't go through all these, but there's some really great shooters and, and other games in there. In fact, there's a lot of stuff hidden away behind here because of space. Um, unfortunately, I can't have it all out, but we've got, um, oh, that's nice, the, the Saturn multi-tap. So I have one of these for the SNES loose. So it's like a multi-tap with Bomberman's face on, so it's got six controller ports in there. And uh, that one is absolutely mint, because I bought new old stock of that. It's just totally pristine, really, really nice. Um, so behind here, we've got some of my Super Nintendo stuff. Which, again, that's a console I don't really collect for. I've got some stuff that is nostalgic to me, say, but um, for day-to-day -day playing the games, I just use the EverDrive. Um, so we've got Super Game Boy there, which is great for playing Game Boy games on the CRT. We've got uh, Zelda Link to the Past, which is a really, really good game. Um, I'm not ri I'm not a huge fan of the 3D Zeldas, but 2D Zeldas I love. Link's Awakening on the Game Boy is my favourite, but I do love uh, A Link to the Past. And we've got a couple of others like Street Fighter, F-Zero and all that jazz in there. And then... Um, we have some Super Famicom games. Uh, Mario Kart, of course. Have to have Super Mario Kart. And uh, we've got a Super Mario World. Pat, any old username, gifted that to me. Um, what a game, yeah. A lot of nostalgia for this game. Absolutely fantastic 16-bit platformer. Um, probably pretty much untouchable as far as 16-bit platformers go, to be honest. Um, but yeah, a few other bits in there. Um, what else we got? So going down to this next shelf, this is PlayStation 1 and then Nintendo stuff. So we've got um, something that's really, really nostalgic to me. One of the very few boxed NES games I have, but Mario Brothers 3, and this is minty. I bought this off Andy Hug, and I only realised afterwards that it is actually the one that has the misprint, where the brother, the the brothers, is over his hand instead of up here. Um, so I assume this is NTSC because uh, I think it was the NTSC one that had the the error. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to tell, but either way, um, that box art is just so iconic to me. When I was a kid, my friends, in fact, I've already mentioned him, Adam, the guy who uh, had the two brothers with the Star Wars stuff. When I was a kid, no one really had an NES because they were too much money. People had home computers, but no one had consoles. And him and his brothers chipped in all their Christmas money one year, the three of them, to get an NES. And, they had certain games, and this is the game that really blew my socks off when they eventually got this, and it just reminds me of being a kid in those days, and I love the box art. It's such a simple um, design, but looks absolutely fantastic, so that's on sort of permanent display there. And then we've got my N64 stuff, a random pack of Mario playing cards there. Um, so my N64 stuff, uh, we've got the Passport, which allows me to play imports on the N64. Um, 1080 I had as a kid. Most of these are ones I had as a kid and like really loved, or in my teens. Um, Diddy Kong Racing, one of my favourite N64 games, even more so than Mario Kart. I love this game, play this game to death. I think it's just such a great game. Um, it's got a lot more depth to it with the like adventure mode and everything. Uh, one of my all-time favourite games, hands down, is GoldenEye. Um, I know people say it's aged terribly, but I can still play it and absolutely have a whale of a time on it. Single player, multiplayer, I love it. I think it's just such a fantastic game. Um, we've got the Zeldas, I'm not really into the 3D Zeldas that much. And we've got a couple of um, Japanese ones. So we've got Mario Kart 64 there, which I only own Japanese. And uh, one of the best games on the, on the console, Sin and Punishment, got this years and years ago um, and it is a Japanese exclusive and it's like an on rails shooter but it is an absolute belter, um, I don't know how well you can see it, there's very small screenshots there but yeah it's an on rails shooter and it's made by Treasure who obviously made things like Guardian Heroes, Guns to Heroes, 
um, McDonald's Treasure Land, etc. But yeah, absolutely fantastic game if you can get hold of that. I don't know if it's gone up much in price, but I did buy that about six years ago for 40 quid, which is reasonable. I don't know how much it's changed since. Um, behind here, we've got all my GameCube stuff. Pretty boring. Um, so a reasonable amount of GameCube games. And then uh, some like loose um, SNES carts and N64 carts there. Uh, PS1 stuff, just in front of the PS1 stuff we've got this. Now this is interesting, if you collect PC Engine games um, or, or um, Turbo Graphics games, is that going to zoom? Focus rather. Let's... Yeah, there you go. So, they come in these little cards called Hue cards and I just bought a couple of these little business card holders. So it's just a business card holder and it fits the Hue cards absolutely perfectly. So if you've got some loose Hue cards that you want to display, you can always grab one of those. They're a couple of quid on eBay. Um, we've also got this little, uh, what do you call these? So that, um, I can't remember, it begins with T, but these little figures, we've got a little Parappa the Rapper because I love that game and it sits well with my PlayStation games. So, um, yeah, just some of my like favourite childhood games. I don't go mad. I, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games, but I pretty much got rid of most of those. Um, so, yeah, some of my favourite games in here from childhood. Here we go. Here's one straight away. Um, Tenchu Stealth Assassins. What a game. I remember that my mate Jaman had a PlayStation and he bought the bundle off one of our other mates, Ben. And this came with a bundle. When we'd never heard of this game, we were like, let's have a look at it and just fell in love with this game. Amazing music, really, really good gameplay, like Stealth Ninja gameplay. And there's been quite a few in the series since, but none of them have quite lived up to that first one for me. Um, Another one of my absolute favourite games, Bishy Bashy Special. Shout out to Cine Steve who has the arcade cab of this and uh, absolutely kicked my ass on it recently at Arcade Club actually. But um, yeah, just a fun party game. It's like a wacky Japanese party game with mini games. And every time in my teens when I go out with friends and we'd come back drunk, we'd whack this on and have a good old laugh and have a little play on this. Really, really good fun. Um, what else we got? Rival Schools, so that is, uh, I showed you Rival Schools 2 earlier on the Dreamcast and that is the one that's kind of like Street Fighter EX plus Alpha, uh, 3D Capcom beat em up, really really cool game, uh, lucky to get this years and years ago for really really cheap, I don't know if it's gone up significantly since. Um, Speaking of Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha, this is one that I've had the Platinum version in my collection for years and years and years and I keep meaning to buy the Black Label one because that's the one we had back in the day. But this is probably one of the games that I've played the most in my life. It's certainly what the game that I played most in my teens probably because I just played this with friends for hours and hours and hours. Like we'd play this so much in our teens that we'd literally get huge blisters on our thumbs and we couldn't play PlayStation for a week because we'd been doing so many Hadoukens on this game. And I still love it. I know it divides people because it's like 3D, but it's still the 2D fighter. It's just 3D graphics, but it's absolute belter. It's one of my favorite Street Fighters, controversially. But um, yeah, played it to death and absolutely love that game. Um, another great PlayStation game, Hogs of War, which is like, um, it's kind of like 3D worms, so you're um, controlling pigs and you have to just defeat your enemies by shooting or blowing them up or whatever but it's a brilliant game really underrated it's got the voice of Rick Mail in as well which is another great plus point um, and yeah last one I'm going to show you uh, is another one of my favorites Parappa the Rapper now this one I got on a demo disc as a kid and it was the onion level the master onion and 
me and my mates just thought it was amazing and just played it to death that level and then finally eventually got the game uh, the full game but yeah brilliant little rhythm game it's got some brilliant tunes really catchy tunes and it's great fun um, so yeah let's move down to the last shelf which is more more modern stuff so I won't spend too much time on that it's not too exciting so bit of an awkward angle here because uh, we're quite low to the floor but hey ho um, so this is all mainly modern stuff so we've got uh, PS2 PS3 uh, and I think is that it yeah, I think it's just PS2 and PS3. But um, we've also got this, my uh, Garbage Pail Kids from back in the day. Now, as I said, there's only two things in this whole room that are from my childhood, and this is the second. It's another one of those business card holders, and it just holds my um, collection of uh, Garbage Pail Kids from back in the day. So yeah, I don't know why I hung on to them, but they kind of remind me of being a kid. and going and buying the packs and, and the taste of the bubble gum and everything. And that's what this whole room is about at the end of the day. It's about nostalgia. Um, you know, I, I come in here and it's like being transported back in time. Um, so yeah, I mean, do I really want to show you this stuff? Probably not. There's a ton of PS2 and PS3 games in there, um, which I have slimmed down, but there's um, still a considerable amount. I love the PS3. PS3 is actually one of my all-time favourite consoles, especially in recent years. I think it's a fantastic console. I had a really good selection of games, and it kind of reignited that passion for games, I suppose, in a way. Um, now I, I've always played games, but I think during the PS2 era and Xbox era, I had other things going on. Um, early in my sort of late teens, early 20s, had a lot of other stuff going on, and the PS3 really kind of revived that spark for gaming. But yeah, I mean, it's a bit boring to talk about PS3 and PS2 stuff, but I'm going to move to the other side of the room, show you the cabinet there and the setup for the gaming and everything. Uh, so just before I show you that side of the room, obviously that's the main cabinet back there. So day to day, there's just this uh, next armchair uh, it's sat in front of it, which I move around and that's why I sit in while I play and it's just super comfortable. I've got this awesome Streets of Rage cushion in there. Um, proper geeky stuff but yeah it's I, I had various other chairs and I had a stool um, which I still have there which I can pull up here if I want to use the Amiga keyboard and all that jazz but just um, you know super comfortable chair really really chuffed with that and a little footstool here as well so it's like really really chilled and relaxed in here so I'll just show you the, kind of this corner of the room it's really awkward filming this but We've got a Day of the Tentacle um, framed picture there. I'll show you the artwork in detail because I've got artwork elsewhere as well. Um, and then we've got the cabinet. Um, so we've got a lot of big box PC and Amiga stuff in there. Um, I'll go through this in depth in a minute. We've got some handheld stuff there as well. Um, we've got my telescope in the way there so you can't really see um, what's in there. Move that out of the way and then yeah there you go so yeah um, let's look at the cabinet first before we look at the actual game setup um, or the gaming setup so let's start off here this is a really awkward angle um, one of the prides of the collection my big box doom 2 signed by john romero who i met at the cambridge computer museum and he did a talk and i had a little chat with him and his uh, wife brenda who's also a game developer let me just move that angle a bit um so yeah i i had this i was with scott brand sega zombie and i had this big box doom 2 for him to sign and he seemed genuinely excited that it was a big box 3.5 inch floppy version and Brenda walked right across the room to look at it and they started discussing the box and everything and I just thought that was awesome. It was nice, really nice memory. Um, and he had a chat with Scott and I for a bit, uh, a chat with Scott and me for a bit um, about this, that and the other. Um, another one here, Dark Forces. These are both in acrylic cases, by the way. So these are made by Adrian Fields, same as the ones my Shenmue are in. Another, there's a lot of LucasArts in this cabinet, I'm not going to lie, it's really, really LucasArts heavy. Um, Dark Force is another game that I played to death, great first person shooter, I was a big fan of Doom obviously, and uh, 
when this came out, it was like, okay, it's first person shooter, or, you know, it was called Doom Clone at the time, but it was like Doom, but it was Star Wars, and that was just a match made in heaven for me, so it was like a massive geek out. A um, couple of other random bits up there, which probably aren't too worth showing. So let's have a look in the cabinet here. So can I adjust you a little bit there? So there we go. So uh, big box PC stuff in the top. So like if you see my previous game rooms, I didn't get to have any of my PC stuff or my big box Amiga stuff really out. So it's super exciting to be able to have them on display because there is absolutely nothing like this for nostalgia for me. So when I look at these boxes, it's just, takes me right back so like I said LucasArts heavy we've got Day of the Tentacles so some of them are in these like just normal box protectors like you'd put your um, SNES games in or Game Boy games in um, Day of the Tentacle absolutely love it Tim Schafer, Dave Grossman, uh, Ron Gilbert can't go wrong um, some, one of my favorite games of all time for sure this is the 3.5 inch floppy version I do have a, a CD version but it's like the budget release you know um, love this game so you can probably see we've got some other big box PC stuff here just classic games from my childhood really like I said we've got Duke Nukem 3D what a game um, we've got Full Throttle there which I actually recently picked up on my last pickups you might have seen that um, let me move that back in there Grand Theft Auto another classic uh, point and click adventure from LucasArts is Sam and Max um, so that was uh, some of the same same team, but based on the characters by Steve Purcell. Really nice condition, they're all absolutely lovely condition. I don't really buy these unless they're like minty condition. But um, I just look at that box art and I'm like, straight back in the 90s, man. It's so awesome. Um, funnily enough, I very rarely play these games because it's a hassle. Uh, I mean, I don't play these versions. I'll play, I'll play them on uh, like GOG or Steam or whatever. Um, but it's, it's worth it for the box art, man. Um, got these little, uh, these little um, top trumps, game console top trumps in there. And then we got the, the main trilogy of X-Wing games. So we've got X-Wing TIE Fighter and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. But they are, again, um, some of my favorite LucasArts games. I wish they'd bring this series back, man, because it's, you know, imagine the X-Wing series piling an X-Wing, piling a TIE fighter, flying through space, taking place in these huge battles and doing missions, but with today's graphics, hell yeah. So I really hope that's gonna happen one day. Um, so let's move down to the next shelf. I move the camera there slightly. Uh, so we've got another classic, one of my all time favorite games. If you know me, you know this, Monkey Island. What a game, Oh, uh, never gets old. Played this a hundred times all the way through and I still play it every year or two and absolutely love it. Just iconic game for me. It was one of the, one of the only games that, I mean, how often do you genuinely laugh when you're playing a game? And I know Monkey Island was certainly the first time I proper, proper belly laughed uh, playing a game. It's really, really funny. It's still funny, great sense of humor, the LucasArts games and it's just really special to me i think back in those days the amiga days were like my formative years playing games um where i really just honed my love of, of gaming and monkey island just means a lot to me from that point of view it's really from a time where i was just learning that i just loved these kind of games and those adventure games and essentially games with a story i just love games that have an immersive story and you get into the characters and you feel for the characters. And uh, if a game can do that for me nowadays, then I'm sold, you know, I'm in. Um, we've got a little, another one of those, I think they're called Tataku figures, Tataku. We've got a little lemming, is that gonna focus? Come on. My autofocus is uh, being proper shit today. So it's going for my, my face. Um, yeah, little Lemmings Tataku figure, because you've got to have a bit of Lemmings if you've got the Omega stuff on display. Um, I've been asked for a nice box of Lemmings, actually, because I picked one up recently, but it was knackered. Uh, another one of my all-time favourite games, Bullfrog Syndicate on the Amiga. Still play this so much. It's such a great game. 
absolutely love this game. It's like a, I suppose, is it like a strategy game? Um, you control like four cyborgs and on missions and you have to like kidnap people or assassinate people or blah 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 blah. Really cool like dystopian future like Blade runner -y style. Um, but yeah, it, it, just a great game, absolutely love it. Some other games that I really loved as a kid, uh, Super Off-Road, classic. We've got Settlers there, uh, June 2, another great game. Uh, we've got Indiana Jones, Fate of Atlantis, Jimmy White. Uh, funnily enough, Jimmy White's World in Snooker is one of my favourite games on the Amiga. And my mate had it on PC and I had it on Amiga and we used to play it to death, this game. Really cool. And A-Train. Um, A-Train I've not played for years, but me and my mate Ali we used to play this game to death, man. Um, and we've got a couple of books and bits and bobs here. Um, let's move down to the handheld stuff. It's Game Boy stuff next. So yeah, we got my Game Boy stuff, so mo mostly stuff I had as a kid. So uh, I did actually have this back in the day, ordered it from Japan on release, that's the Famicom SP. Um, unfortunately sold mine, had to buy it back, and the console on this one is mint. But the box you can see, a little bit knackered, but not too bad. Um, some classic games from my childhood. In fact, these are all games from my childhood, which I might do a separate video on at some point. So, Super Mario 1 and 2, obviously. Um, iconic games, you know. Super Mario Land was probably one of the first games I played when I got my Game Boy. Absolutely loved it. And 2 just builds on it. And what they achieved on the Game Boy with 2 was just really impressive. Um, Box Game Boy, this is the one I had as a kid, the one that comes with Tetris, really nice nick, again the box protector, in fact all my Game Boy stuff is in box protectors, um, just stunning, iconic, again reminds me of, of childhood. And then yeah, these are all games I had as a kid, so like uh, Empire Strikes Back, Kirby's Dream Land, Motocross Maniacs, Radar Mission, blah 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 blah. We've got another SP there, we've got a Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance box, and then we've got a small collection of Game Boy Advance games, because I am intending to just buy an EverDrive for the Game Boy Advance, but games that I really liked back in the day, like Super Mario Circuit, Street Fighter Alpha 3, uh, I had, you know, back in the day. And then my favourite Game Boy Advance game, and again, this is one of my favourite games of all time, the Advance Wars 2, and Advance Wars 2 is like, um, it's like a, a turn-based strategy game, but really cartoony. It's not the kind of game I'd normally play, but I remember just randomly getting this back in the day, maybe it was a gift or something, and I still play this, like, I, it was probably about six months ago, I went through a, uh, a phase, or like, I finished the phase six months ago, but I was playing this for like four months every night, and I'd go to bed and play like a round of this, because it's super addictive, and it just doesn't get old, it's just fantastic, um, so that's cool. Here's a Game Boy game I missed. Uh, one of my all-time favourite games, and certainly my favourite Game Boy game, is a Link's Awakening, Zelda Link's Awakening. Now, this I got as a kid, and uh, yeah, I mean, I must have been 11, 12, and I just thought this was fantastic. The scope of this game, and what they achieved on the Game Boy hardware was just like nothing I'd ever played before. And I used to remember sitting in on rainy days when it was, uh, you know, really wet outside and I couldn't go out and play. And I'd sit on my Game Boy for about six hours and just play through this whole thing in one sitting. And um, I must have completed it God knows how many times. Just still one of my absolute favourite games of all time, this one. Next shelf down is more big box stuff. And I've left, uh, deliberately left a gap on this shelf because I. I'm after a couple of big box games that are going to fill the gaps. So another one of my favourites, Monkey Island 2, um, just absolutely smashed the, the first one in terms of graphical quality and size, it's just fantastic. And whopping 11 discs this one, same as um, Indiana Jones, and just yeah, what can you say about Monkey Island 2? Definitely one of my favourite games of all time. Um, and then we've just got a couple of other ones that I played as a kid, like uh, you know, Xenon 2 Theme Park. We've got some books, so most of my books are on a bookcase in the bedroom, but there are a few in here like the Art of Point and Click Adventure Games and the Mega Drive Collected Works um, and the Amiga book there, just some like arty um, books kind of related to the Amiga or Mega Drive or whatever. 
Um, there's more um, more handheld stuff further down. So this shelf is kind of loose uh, handhelds and some other bits. So I've got all this in one of these lipstick um, holders. So let me just grab it. So yeah, you can buy these on eBay really cheap. They're like lipstick holders or makeup holders and you can put your loose carts or your consoles or whatever in there. We've got a few, um, a few like Game Gear accessories back there, like the TV tuner and what have you. Um, the Turtles Konami handheld there, which was a gift from Luke Base Invader. And then um, I've sold off, I had a huge collection of uh, like loose Game Boys and all sorts, Game Boy Pocket Micros, all sorts, but I, I sold off most of them because they're just sat sitting there and I kept one of each that I really like. This Game & Watch, the Donkey Kong, I had as a kid. This isn't my original one, sadly, but um, yeah, absolutely loved this game back as a, as a kid. It's one of the first things I ever got, sort of gaming-wise. Um, so that's got a nice bit of nostalgia for me. And then we've got loose Game Boy games, just random loose Game Boy games there. Um, but the yeah, the the main meaty Game Boy games I have boxed are the ones that I had as a kid. Um, next one down is Game Gear. So Game Gear, another console that I had as a kid that's like means a lot to me from childhood. Really, really enjoyed it back in the day. So th again, we've got the Game Gear console that I had as a kid. Um, sorry for the glare, but it's got a box protector on it. But yeah, this is the one I, I got back in the day. And then we've got um, all the box games. I have got a lot of ri got rid of a lot of these as well. Um, but generally, all the ones I had as a kid that I really enjoyed. Um, Donald Duck. Lucky Dime Caper, that was one that I had back in the day. Um, Factory Panic, a little puzzler that I had. That's a cool game. But there's plenty of games that I didn't have back in the day. We've got Ninja Gaiden, uh, Pop Hills, another great little puzzle game. Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap, that's gotta be my favorite. If I can get it out. Hands down my favorite. Um, Game Gear game, brilliant game, used to love this back in the day. And then we've got the Sonics and what have you there. We've got um, some loose carts there. Uh, Master of Darkness, that's a really cool kind of Castlevania-y style game that's uh, on, the, on the Game Gear that I never played back in the day, but got more recently. But yeah, kind of a mixture of old and new in there, but um, yeah. I do love the I do love the Game Gear. While I'm down here, I might as well show you just uh, in between the cabinets here. We've got PS3 and a couple of pads, and, and we've got a uh, a Pentium laptop in here that Cine Steve gave me. So PS3 is not actually set up, but I just plug it in when I'm, when I want to use it. Um, we've got another PS3 set up downstairs that um, since we moved in, I haven't bothered to set up either. But uh, yeah, still love my PS3, still think PS3 is definitely well worth playing in, in this day and age and really, really good console. So let's have a look at the actual setup of the TVs and everything in here, guys. So let me sit on this stool so I can actually um, show you what's what. So we've got the BBC Micro here. BBC Micro, probably the first computer that I really, really got stuck into playing games on. Absolutely love BBC Micro. That came from Alex and Nintendo Arcade. I just still need to do a video on that. I haven't done a video on this BBC since I got it. Um, then we've got my Amiga 1200 there, which has the compact flash um, hard drive inside and accelerator and all that jazz. And it's going very yellow, but I've got a brand new case coming for that in a couple of months which is really exciting, brand new case and keys, so keep an eye out for that video. Um, we've got the Tarte set up here. So this rotates 360 degrees and side to side in any which way you can think of. So when I put it away, it just sits against the cabinet there and it's drilled into the side of the cabinet, but you can move it any way you want. You can move it, um, you know, side to side, whatever you want to do. Um, but generally, it's just set up as Tarte mode. We got Dodon Patchy on Saturn running on that at the moment. Did I just unplug it? Yeah, I did unplug it. There we go. So that's yeah, 
like I said, Dote on Apache on Saturn running on there, and that's going through the OSSC, so I can run SCAR straight from the Saturn to here, but it looks fantastic through the OSSC with the scan lines and everything. Um, over here we've got a little, uh, you might have seen my little um, AT-AT at -AT driver from uh, Star Wars. We've got my little Devoom device there, which uh, plays music, Bluetooth speaker, and also has pixel art on it. So you've got like a, a Sega thing going on there. And then the B&O, um, Pride and Joy, focal point in the game room, B&O. Now, you guys might remember I did have an MX-8000, sold that, um, that went to Andy at Arcade Club, that's now at Arcade Club Leeds. And I bought an MX-4000, so the, the 8000 is the 28 inch one, and this is the 21 inch. And it fits so much better in a room this size. It's absolutely perfect. Sit here on my chair and just play some Streets of Rage 2 or whatever, and it, it, it's perfect. Um, so we've got the uh, um, orange N64 controller there with a stand. I forget the guy's name who makes the stands. And then we've got a Sonic um, who's holding the copy of Remute, which is the album that came out recently for the Mega Drive. But yeah, um, let's show you kind of how the consoles are set up down here and everything. So all the consoles are in this Kallax unit. I'm sure if you guys watch YouTube or have a game room, you might have or know of the Kallax unit. It's a classic IKEA. But um, if you are going to get them, I'd recommend getting the glass shelves because if you have just one console in these cubes, you've got a whole lot of wasted space and it seems to make more sense to have a shelf in there. So we've got... Um, We've got PC Engine there. I've got my Mega Drive Mega CD. We've got the Saturn and the Dreamcast there. Um, oh, we've got this blue lighting here. Now the lighting can change color, so I can either pick the color I want or you can have it cycling through the colors, but I like the blue, especially at night. It looks really nice and soft coloring the light blue. Um, down here, we've got a couple of shelves with arcade sticks on, so. We've got the uh, Dreamcast arcade stick there, which is modded, so you've got Samwa buttons on there. And then, um, oh no, that's Seimitsu buttons there. And then this one is the Dreamcast stick that's been modified to run on the original Xbox. So that is, um, yeah, been modified, so you've got like buttons for credits there and what have you. Um, so Beeps Brian made, made that one. Um, so that's awesome because it's impossible to get a good stick for the original Xbox. And then underneath these we've got drawers, um, which I'll show you the drawers separately because um, they're full of like controllers and adapters and all that jazz. Let's move over this way a bit. So moving on from the Saturn and Dreamcast, we've got uh, the little um, the little 10 inch uh, little CRT JVC kind of PVM style TV that I got from Dana, Danester. We've got a PS2 on top there, and this is running the uh, the N64 over here. So we've got Orange N64 there, and we've got Super Famicom with the Super EverDrive up there. So we've got EverDrive for the Mega Drive and the Turbo Graphic, uh, the PC Engine as well. Um, down here we've got another couple of sticks. So we've got a PlayStation uh, Fighting Stick PS, and then the Saturn Fighting Stick, and then uh, another um, drawer full of stuff here, which I'll show you in a sec. So yeah, in the drawers down here, we've just got like wall-to-wall -wall controllers and adapters, mostly controllers. Um, there's that Bomberman multi-tap for the, for the snares that I was talking about earlier. That's cool. We've got my Xbox, uh, CoinOps Xbox, just purely because it actually won't fit in the Kallax, so I just leave it down there until I want to use it. Um, load of controllers in here. This is like the main controller box, really. So we've got my Saturn Virtua stick, really cool stick that, one of my favorites. Um, and then just like, yeah, ton of controllers. You've got Saturn Mega Drive. We've got the Fighting Commander PC for the PC Engine, six button controller, kind of SNES style shape. Um, and uh, Avenue Pad, which I showed you the box for earlier, which is a really nice PC Engine controller. Um, load of Dreamcast controllers. Uh, load of N64. I've got a ton of N64 controllers. It's insane how many, really. Um, We've got some cool, I've got a couple of these, uh, Dreamcast fight pads, so they are great for things like, um, 
you know, the 2D fighters, because I like to have a D-pad, I don't like to use arcade sticks, I prefer the arcade sticks for the shooters. Um, there is another blue one in there, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, another blue one there. Really nice pads they are. But yeah, that's kind of the setup. Um, if I zoom out a bit. That's all the consoles set up. Oh, I should say that there's two boxes. So there's one down here, um, which I keep behind the arcade stick. Yeah, you can see it there. There's like a, a switcher box down there. And then there's one up here next to the B&O, which just shows, um, which changes between, if that's gonna focus, I don't know, is it? Maybe not, but um, it changes between uh, yeah, I can change between various systems on the fly, a load of stuff's plugged in. If I want to switch between Mega Drive to Dreamcast or Amiga, I can do that. Um, again, let's have a little look at this artwork there, really, really cool artwork there. And then just the main desktop here, like I said, they've got the BBC and the Amiga, which is undercover at the moment, but my Amiga mouse and Commodore mouse mat. And then, uh, yeah, that's just the setup basically. And just very quickly, because I said I would, I'll just show you the other artwork in the room. Um, we've got the Day of the Tentacle poster there, which is like Star Wars styled. So both LucasArts thing themed, obviously. Um, I love that poster, I've always loved that artwork, so having it in the game room is a no brainer. And one that I didn't show you earlier was this. This is, I forget where I got this, but it popped up few years ago and it's like a Mega Drive case style but it's um, a poster for the Millennium Falcon and the Kessel Run 12 Parsec Challenge so I just love that it's like two things I love Mega Drive and Star Wars in one so um, let me just flip you back round so that was my 2019 room tour guys thanks for watching you might have noticed that my Bartop Arcade isn't in here at the moment that's at work currently and I'm kind of thinking, is that going to go uh, on the bit behind the camera here in the game room? Or what am I going to do with it? I'm not sure. But it's definitely staying. I'm not getting rid of it or anything. But it's just at work for now. Um, but yeah, the game room tour is great for me. It's just kind of a record. I like to do them in each house. And as the collection progresses and everything changes, just as kind of a record for me for, to looking, for looking back on in the future. Um, but yeah, I'll include a few little clips on the end, a little montage of clips for you guys to have a look at, anything I might have missed. And thank you very much for watching, I'll see you soon. Cheers.